Hi guys and welcome back to Pink Student. Today we're going to be looking at the top 10 hardest GCSEs in 2020. It can be tough deciding what GCSE options you want to take, and so you may find it helpful to find out which subjects are the hardest. You usually choose your options in either Year 9 or Year 10, and depending on the school, you can pick anywhere between 2-5 to five extra subjects to learn. And while some people may like taking some challenging subjects, others may prefer easier ones. And if that person's you, we also have a video and article covering the top 10 easiest GCSEs, so if you'd like to check it out, you can find links to it in the description below. We also have loads more articles and videos covering the equipment you'll need for certain subjects, a more in-depth look covering all the appropriate content you'll cover, plus how difficult we think they are. And you can find all of those on our website at thinkstudent.co.uk, which is also linked in the description below. At number 10, we have English language. English language has a pass rate of 70.2%, which is actually fairly high for any GCSE, and it's part of the reason why English language isn't higher on this list. English language consists of mostly showing off your talent in writing, but lacks any big chunks of knowledge you need to revise for. The core focus of English language is presenting your writing techniques, making sure you use them correctly and at appropriate times. Although there's not much content overall, you do still need to make a habit of revising, as practicing your writing skills and storytelling will certainly help you hone your skills, giving you a much better chance in the final exam. The one thing that makes English language hard, however, and the main reason why it's on this list, is the fact that the exam content can be chosen from a vast range of topics. There are a couple unseen texts you'll be given, and you're expected to analyse them with no prior knowledge, so all you can really do is practice your analysis skills and other texts and hope for the best. At number 9 we have Modern Foreign Languages. The Modern Foreign Languages consist of French, German and Spanish, with Spanish being the most commonly taught. Many students decide that they want to take one, but if you're looking for a real challenge, we recommend two. And if you've had experience with at least one of these languages growing up, it can basically be a free GCSE. But if you, like most, haven't, Learning a language introduces a whole new experience, as it can be very different from learning in any other subject. The pass rate for these GCSEs are 70.5 for Spanish, 75.2 for German, and 69.8 for French as of 2018, which for German is quite high, but the others are fairly average. The easy part of these modern foreign languages, however, is the fact that there's not a whole lot of content to learn relative to other GCSEs. There are also many free resources online that can assist you in learning a language these days, which can make this GCSE even easier. At number 8 we have History. GCSE History is very popular with students, but with a pass rate of only 63.9%, one of the lowest on this list, why do so many people take it? The primary reason most students take this subject is because it looks great on your CV when applying for a university placement, especially when combined with its A-level counterpart. The content for History is quite difficult, and there's a whole range of skills that you'll need to have become comfortable with before you enter your exam. You'll need to be able to write extended answers which discuss reasons and ideas behind major historical events, all while remembering loads of key dates and people as well. Due to the sheer volume of information you need to know, history has its spot on our list of the hardest GCSEs. If you're particularly interested in history, however, you'll find the subject a little easier than others as you'll be more motivated to engage with the content. At number 7 we have Biology. GCSE Biology has a pass rate of 82.9% in 2018, which may be far higher than you'd expect. But this is simply due to the fact that schools focus heavily on the sciences, and biology is no exception. Biology is a great subject to have under your belt, however, as it's a facilitating subject for both college and university, and this reason also confirms a high pass rate, as your school will most likely push students to achieve a high grade. Biology has a large amount of content like history and some slightly more advanced topics that may be hard to understand. There's a silver lining to this subject though, as only 10% of the marks across the papers come from maths, which is great for any of you who struggle with that subject. Most of the maths content is mostly from the earlier stages of GCSE level, meaning it's not too difficult either, and if you take triple science, the extended learning time will make it even easier. And number 6, we have computer science. GCSE Computer Science is one of those subjects which seems to be growing exponentially in terms of the people partaking in the subject each year. And this is generally because we're living in a day and age now where computers are heavily involved in most daily occurrences. Computer Science is split into theory, which involves you learning how and why computers do what they do, and also a practical aspect where you can learn to program and produce a project. In addition to all of this, You'll also have to apply your skills that you've learned in GCSE Maths, as computer science relies heavily on your ability to work out difficult problems. 
This subject also has one of the lowest pass rates of all the GCSEs on this list at 61.6% .6 in 2018. This is an incredibly low pass rate for any GCSE and for those that passed, only 3.7% achieved the highest grade of a 9. Therefore, we would only recommend this subject if you have an interest in it so you can make sure to give it a lot of attention. And number 5 we have Maths. This subject is slightly different to some others on this list as it's compulsory for students to take. That means that even if you have no interest in it, you'll have to do it anyway. GCSE Maths is a tough subject, especially when aiming for the high grades, so that's why many students come to dislike it. GCSE Maths features many different formulas and equations that you'll have to use, along with the need to recognise when to apply them. Maths can also be quite a complex subject, with most of the content interlinking with other parts, so ensuring that you at least somewhat have a grasp on all the content is a must. The average pass rate for Maths GCSE is around 60%, just lower than computer science, and this pass rate has stayed that way for the past few years, which relative to other GCSEs on this list is the lowest of all the subjects, mainly due to the fact that students simply don't enjoy it. If you're someone who struggles with the maths content, or you just like to ensure you get the best grades possible for this subject, we have a whole article dedicated to the best tips and tricks when revising for GCSE maths, so if you'd like to check it out, you can find it linked in the description below. And number four, we have chemistry. GCSE Chemistry, in our opinion, is the second hardest science GCSE that you can take, just harder than GCSE Biology. This subject has an overall pass rate at 89.7% as of 2018, slightly higher than GCSE Biology, but slightly less than Physics. The reason behind this pass rate being higher is that the majority of students are receiving a lower passing grade in Biology than Chemistry. GCSE Chemistry involves loads of hard-to-get-your-head-around topics, which even the brightest students can struggle with, so unless you put in the work, you may fall behind in this subject. As with biology, taking triple science as opposed to the compulsory double science will provide you with extra hours to improve your knowledge, but the content is also slightly harder as you cover more topics. Chemistry, in our opinion, is the most interesting science on this list as it contains many required practicals which can be fun to carry out, which makes chemistry more worth taking even though it's difficult. And number three, we have English literature. GCSE English literature has lots of content that you're expected to learn including works from Shakespeare, modern texts, and poetry. There's also an unseen poem for each exam that, just like English language, you're expected to analyse with no prior knowledge. GCSE English Literature has an average pass rate of 72.9%, which is fairly standard for a difficult GCSE. What we personally found the most challenging about the exams were the hours of writing, and unfortunately, the only way to improve that writing was to continue practising. This part of English literature is what makes it difficult to revise, as writing extended answers proved to be both time-consuming and monotonous. Once again, however, there are many people who enjoy English literature and English language, and if you're one of them, it's going to make revising for the subject a whole lot easier, and you'll develop your skills a lot faster, most of the time allowing you to get a higher grade. And number two, we have physics. GCSE physics is a topic well known for its high amount of mass content, with many equations you'll have to remember and be able to apply to questions. The volume of equations in GCSE Physics is also quite high as well, having more than GCSE Biology and Chemistry combined. Physics actually has a surprisingly high average pass rate of 90.6%, which may lead you to believe that this subject is easy. However, the high pass rate is simply down to the fact that schools know physics is difficult, therefore often put emphasis on its teaching. Although as both GCSE Maths and Physics are compulsory, they can help each other out quite a bit. This is due to the similarity in lots of their content working with numbers, so if you practice enough maths, you'll indirectly boost your physics grade and vice versa. And number one, we have further maths. Right at the top of our list, we have further maths, in our opinion, the hardest GCSE and for good reason. The content covered in further maths doesn't expand on things already taught in regular maths. It instead involves harder content covered in higher level qualifications, which even talented students can struggle with. Further maths is not offered by all schools either, due to the risk of students failing, as the content can be tough. However, if you're up for the challenge, further maths is a facilitating subject and looks great in your college and university applications, especially if you have a high grade. Further maths also features a slightly wider range of grades, with the top being an A hat, which ranks above an A star. Achieving this is like an A star distinction, which really shows off your skills. Well that's it for this video guys. If you'd like to check out the article form of this video, or any of the other articles and videos, you can find them linked in the description down below. Don't forget, we also have a perfect article to help you out if you're struggling with GCSE maths, along with all the equipment you'll need, which is also linked in the description.